Today we are going to learn about sitting posture, how to sit right. And you're going to learn from Dr. Shalini Mukherjee the benefits of sitting right, how it affects other aspects of our lives. It will be an incredible session. Hi everyone on the 4 for Life community. I really love the concept of the committee and the way you focus and encourage and help people towards integrating the four amazing habits into their daily life. I'm Dr. Shalini Mukherjee. I'm a master functional trainer, a rehab practitioner, a mobility specialist, a barefoot trainer. I will be talking today about posture, about how a good posture can help you attain amazing health and how a bad posture can give you a lot of metabolic issues and problems which you may be seeing in your daily life. Depending on how we are maintaining our posture, I'm going to be talking about sitting. Do you know that we sit for 10, 12, 15 hours a day, that many hours, that many days, months and years? We are sitting for almost half our life. So we need to evaluate how we sit because sitting is not good for health, but sitting in a wrong posture is injurious to your health, more injurious than smoking. For that many months, for that many years, so almost half our life, we are sitting. Sitting is not good for health. Sitting in bad posture is definitely injurious to health. It's more injurious to health than smoking. So what happens when you sit? Sitting affects a lot of our metabolic reactions. It causes a lot of metabolic changes in our body. It affects the way we breathe. It affects our digestion. We've heard so much. I've heard so much from Pramila. She is giving this concept of super eating, gut health, which is fantastic. But posture also affects your gut health, which is so very important. Posture affects the way your heart is functioning, the way your muscles and joints are aligned. So you have to maintain a good amount of posture so that your body functions well. What happens when we are in the wrong posture? Now I will be concentrating on sitting, but what I'm going to do in this 20 minutes, I'm going to give you simple tips and hacks which are gonna change your life. They are very, very simple movements which you can incorporate in your daily life and you will start seeing the change towards better health, better posture and an injury-free life. So let's begin with the chair. I am sure all of us are sitting on a chair. I'm going to be showing you a profile view. So it's very difficult for all of us to sit upright all the time. So most of us go into a comforting position where we rounded our back and taken support of the backrest. Our shoulders get slouched in front. We have our computer or our iPad or our table here. We have sunk in low. In order to see better, we are craning our neck in front and we are in this position for that many hours of the day. What happens? Our spine, we are born with a natural curvature. So we are born with a normal, healthy, good posture. You see a child crawling, they are crawling effortlessly. You see their spine, which is so beautifully aligned. But you ask us to do the same thing now and it's so difficult. That's because of the lifestyle changes of sitting for long hours, which changes the curvature of our spine. It changes the positioning of our joints, our bones, our muscles, and our tendons. Now, because of this change, the range of movement around our joints get affected. So our efficiency in terms of movement is affected. When we sit, we are craning our neck in front, so there's a lot of tension in our cervical spine. Many a times, migraines could be due to that because of the pressure of the nerves in your cervical spine. We sit in a slouched position where our shoulders drop in front. We have our rib cage in the front. 
what happens when we are slouching? We are compressing our rib cage. Our lungs are within our rib cage. So our breathing efficiency drops to almost 50% or lower because the lungs are unable to expand and take in that air. Less air coming in, less oxygen reaching the cells. Oxygen is essential for our daily life. Less oxygen reaching the cells, the efficiency of our organs, the working of our organs are affected. The toxins produced in our body are not able to be thrown out efficiently. So we land up with improper functioning of all our internal organs. We have metabolic issues because of the toxins in our body. The inflammatory conditions in our body go up. We land up with inflammatory disorders like hypertension, diabetes, blood pressure related cardiac problems, and so many other problems. When we slouch or we sit in this position, our spine is rounded. Now, because of that, there is a compression in the anterior segment of our body. So when we are eating our food and we are eating in a slouched position, we are in that because that's the new normal for us because sitting over uh, uh, that many hours in that position, we get up and we walk in this position. I mean, I'm showing you an exaggerated version. You may not be here. You may be here with a slight slouch, but that becomes the new normal for us. We walk like that, we exercise like that, we run like that, we cook like that. And that in turn leads to a long-term change in our form. So when we slouch and eat, our stomach gets compressed. When we are eating and our stomach is compressed, there is less space. So there's regurgitation of food. I mean your GERD or the acidity could be because of eating in the wrong form. Because of that compression, the digestion is affected. So the food passes slowly into your intestines, absorptions are affected. Even if you're eating right, the digestion being affected, nutrients do not reach the cell and you are into nutrient deficiencies because of the wrong posture so many things related to posture. When we are sitting, we are craning our neck in front, creating a lot of stress in our neck, rounding our back, dropping our shoulders in front and creating pressure in our lower back. Now we may experience aches and pains in our legs because our spinal cord runs around the center of our back. And when we are sitting and rounding, there's a lot of compression in the lower back segment, leading to pain along the length of your legs, causing hip pain, lower back pain, knee issues, and ankle issues. So what are we going to do to change that? One is I will show you a simple, simple movement. I need all of y'all to take one arm and place it behind in the base of your skull. So I'm going to be doing that with the other arm. The other hand, I take my index finger and place it on my chin and I try to push my head back. So watch me again, I'm here. I'm just placing this palm at the back for supporting the base of my skull. The other hand index finger on my chin and I try pushing my head back. Now you may not be able to go all the way back. It's okay. Even a centimeter or two is good enough to create that awareness of change in the position of your neck. Now you could do that and hold it there for say five seconds, 10 seconds. Do it with the other arm, otherwise that arm may get tired. You could do it two or three times. So you will realize that you are actually positioning the head back in its right position. Ideally, your ear should be aligned with your shoulder. We then come down next to our neck. Now, all of us, when we sit, because we are in a slouched position and our hands are up working on our keypad, 
our shoulders get raised up. This leads to a lot of tension around our neck. These muscles are called as stress muscles. I mean, even when you're stressed about something and you're upset about something, automatically you go into a very slight shrug and that causes a lot of tenseness around the neck muscles. So I'm gonna show you a very simple movement which you can do. I want you to drop your shoulders away from your ears. So for all the ladies out there, imagine you're wearing a very long earring and you don't want the end of the earring to touch your shoulders. So imagine someone is pulling your arms down, drop those shoulders, take it away from your ears. Now, I need you to just tilt your head to one side without lifting that opposite shoulder. So keep that shoulder down, tilt your head to one side. If this is comfortable for you, I just want you to turn your chin and look over your shoulder on the side that you have tilted. You will feel a tension running along the behind your ears right up till your shoulder. So here we are trying to lengthen the stress muscles which are in a constant state of contraction. So you could do this, drop your shoulder down, turn, tilt your head and turn. Hold it there for five or 10 seconds. Don't hold your breath, keep breathing and come back. Repeat the same thing on the other side. Tilt your head, keeping that shoulder down. Don't lift it up. Once you're comfortable in this position, just turn your head. If you can all do it with me, you'll understand what I'm saying and feel that lengthening of that side. Now, these are very simple, small movements, which you can do in between your work or, you know, it will not even take 10 seconds or 15 seconds, but just doing this, you will loosen out those muscles, your tension will come down and you'll be able to perform better. You'll be able to concentrate better. We now come to our shoulders. So you can do that in a sitting position, but I'm going to show you in a standing position. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my arms up in line with my shoulder. Now my right hand, I'm going to open it up towards the ceiling. My left arm, palm faces down. My fingers are opened out. I'm going to take my right arm up towards the ceiling in an angle, and I'm going to drop my left arm down. Now, I'm going to turn my thumb towards the back, be it the right arm or the left arm, and bring it back. You will realize that you are working something in your mid back. You know, when we sit and we have our shoulders hunched in front, the anterior segment of our body is in a state of contraction. What happens to the back muscles, the stabilizers of your spine? They get stretched out and elongated. You know, and if you're doing this like 10, 12 hours a day, after a point, they become so weak, they lose their strength. So what I'm trying to do now is to create awareness that we have these muscles, we need to wake them up, we need to make them work, we need to get the strength back in these muscles. Very simple, let's do it. Try do it, doing it with me. Arms out, take one palm, you could start with your right, palm facing the ceiling, left palm facing down. Now, take your right hand up, left hand down. Now push your right thumb to the back and push your left thumb to the back. So what I'm doing is I'm going into an opening of my right shoulder, external rotation of my right and an inward rotation of my left. And I come back to the center. So you could do it another two times. I'm sure all of you all will be feeling that mid back muscles work. Imagine you're wringing a wet cloth and wringing out the water from there. So that's what you should be feeling in your mid back. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Open out, left palm faces the ceiling, right palm faces down. Take your left arm up, right hand diagonal down. Now, turn both your thumb back towards the wall, the back wall, and come back. Turn it and come back. One more time, 
turn it and come back. So you will realize that we are activating our mid-back muscles, the stabilizers of our thoracic spine in the mid-segment at the back. Now, initially, these muscles may fatigue very fast because we've not been using them. So you could do, say, five reps on each side, but eventually, if you can, increase it to, say, 10 reps and do it two to three times a day, it will actually help you in opening out your ribcage, in opening out your shoulders. So keeping your shoulders back and down will become effortless rather than a chore of keeping it there. You know, so as you keep strengthening the muscles, the posture that you want will get into your subconscious. You'll do it without any effort. So that's the whole idea of retraining your mind to correct your posture. As we go lower, I mean, all of us slouch, we all do. It's not, uh, it's impossible to sit erect and work all times, but we do not slouch straight. Some of us may be tilting to one side. Maybe you're on the call and you've tilted your head and you know, you're know dropping down to one side, or maybe you're writing something and you're tilting, you're talking to someone on uh, standing next to you. So there's a lot of side movements that happen. So we have these muscles on our side and these very tiny muscles in your lower back called as quadratus lumbordum. I'm sure all of y'all must have heard QL. You know, I mean, you, your back goes into a spasm or it becomes stiff and you go to the doctor and they say, oh, your QL is tight. So that's because of continuously, you know, squeezing that muscle by that wrong form. And these tiny muscles fatigue very fast. So they go into that spasm and they stay there. And that's when the symptom that you get is lower back pain and you're unable to straighten up and your back becomes stiff. So I'm gonna show you again, a very, very simple movement that everyone can do. So let's sit on the chair. Let's move away from the backrest. So imagine we have a string attached from the top of your head, the crown of your head to the ceiling. So if you're here, imagine it is pulling you up. So try lengthening your torso, try opening out your shoulders. We did that sh shoulder movement. So squeeze that mid back muscles and open your shoulders out. Once you're here, see that your chin is tucked in and take your right arm up. Now, when I say take your right arm up, I do not mean lift your shoulders up. Yeah, so do not shrug your shoulder, just lift your arm up. Now, for many people, even this itself, you will feel the opening out of your side. Place your other arm on this thigh, on the side that the arm is up. Now, I need you all to tilt to the left. If your right arm is up, tilt to the left. But I do not want the movement to come from your neck or from your shoulder. I need the movement to come from the right side. So start lengthening from the side and imagine you're reaching to one corner on the left without moving your head, without craning your neck up and down, maintaining that distance. So you will feel the opening out on this side. So we can go there, hold it for like three to four seconds and come back. When you're doing this, do not shrug your left shoulder. So keep that relaxed and come back. Let's do this on the other side. So you may notice that one side is more difficult than the other. So maybe that side muscle is tighter than the other. Take your left arm up, drop your left shoulder down, maintain that length of your torso. As I said, imagine the string is pulling your head up towards the ceiling. Place your right hand on your left thigh without moving your head independently. Move your torso as one unit and reach. Do not lift the right shoulder. Keep it nice and relaxed. Don't hold your breath. Keep breathing and come back. Let's do it one more time. 
as you reach sideways, tilt from the side and feel the lengthening of your left side and come back. So what we did till now, we tried positioning our ear in line with our shoulder. We tried lengthening the sides of our neck. We tried opening out and creating movement in our rotator cuff muscles, engaging our mid-back muscles. We tried lengthening our sides. We come to a very, very important aspect now is our lumbar, our lower back. Now here, I would like to talk about, I'll make an analogy with a car. We all have airbags in our car. What does an airbag do? It protects you from injury. It stabilizes you when there is a sudden drastic movement. Now that is the job of our abs. Our abs are the airbags for our spine, for our lumbar region. So we need to activate our abs. We are not talking about crunches. I will get to crunches a little later, but what I'm talking about is that our abs support our lower back. So if we have activated our abs, what I would want all of you all to do, you can, you can stand up to do this, uh, place one palm on your navel and place the back of the other palm in your lower back, okay? Now, I would want you to pull your navel as close to your spine as you can and feel the pressure in your lower back. You'll actually feel it straightening out and becoming more stable. So if we activate our abs during any kind of movement, whether we are in a static form like sitting or standing or doing movement, for example, walking, cooking, uh, uh, bending over, doing anything, if we have activation in our abs, we will not have any back injuries. 90% of lower back injuries happen because of loss of activation of our abs. Of course, our mid back and our glutes play also an important role, but essentially it's the abs. So always remember abs are your airbags for your lumbar spine. A small talk on crunches because you can land up with cervical and lower back injuries when you're doing crunches. Now, what is crunch? I'm going to, I mean, what I normally see people doing. So say I'm on the floor and I'm seated. It's about this. So I'm crunching. I'm working my abs. I need six packs. I'm bending my back. So sitting also bends your back. So if we are sitting and slouching, we are in a crunch. So if a crunch could give us six packs, if we are sitting for six, eight, 10, 12 hours, we all should have had six packs by now. It's not about crunching. It's not about rounding your back. A crunch is a lift of your torso, maintaining the length of your torso, and only activating your abs, engaging your abs. So there's a huge difference. In fact, there's this whole research section of RIP crunches, rest in peace crunches. You get six packs by activating, doing uh, uh, body weight exercises like squats, like doing overhead shoulder press, like holding in planks, that is ab activation. So let's come back to our hip. Our hip is one of the major big movement muscles that God has given us. Our glutes, our hip muscles are our major balancing muscles of our body. What happens to these muscles when we sit? Our glutes gets completely deactivated. Our hip mobility is gone because you are sitting and constantly in that bend. So you have lost the mobility of the hip, 
you have lost the activation of your glutes. What is sitting? Sitting is a hamstring activation and workout. So by sitting constantly for long hours, you are activating your hamstring constantly, you're activating your calf muscles, you're working them. When you constantly work a muscle, the muscle goes into contraction. The length of the muscle shortens. Now muscles are attached to your joints or your bones with tendons. So say your hamstring, the origin of the hamstring is your lower back, L4, L5, the insertion is behind your kneecap. So when the length of the hamstring shortens because of prolonged sitting, the tendons which attach it to your joint or bones get stretched. So you feel the symptom either in your lower back or in the knees. So sitting causes lower back pain, causes knee problems. It is because of contracted hamstring, contracted outer thigh. Now for runners, that's very important because if you land up sitting for long hours and you are running, because your glutes are deactivated, you run with your hamstring. You are supposed to glute run. You are supposed to activate these amazing muscles which God has given us for balancing, which is our glutes. You need to run with your glutes. But you are running with your hamstrings because your glutes are deactivated. And that's when you do not land well. So the gait of your running is affected. The gait of your walking is affected. And you land up loading the smaller joints, which is your knee, your ankle. You land up with knee issues, ankle problems, plantar fasciitis, you know, a lot of pain in the sole of your feet. So all this could be because of sitting. So sitting is injurious to health. So what do we do? As I said, I gave you a few movements to do for the upper part of the body. Now let's come to the hip. So when we are sitting, again, push the chin back, open out those shoulder blades. Imagine there's a pencil in the center of your mid back. Try holding it with your shoulder blades. Imagine there's a string attached to the top of your head. Pull your torso up, lengthen your torso. Pull your navel close to your spine because that's the airbag for your lower back. Now, maintaining this form from your head to your hip, I need you to get your hands by your side and just lean forward slightly. Mind you, we are not moving our neck, not moving our shoulders. Don't leave the activation of your abs. So if initially you can do this much only, it's fine. It's great. You're still activating. But if you want to go further, just because you want to go further and you've lost your head and lost your neck and you go till here, you're not really achieving anything. So it is all about activation. It is all about maintaining the form from your head to your hip and leaning forward. Yeah, so this is one of the basics we teach actually for people who do deadlifts because you're lifting a heavy load off the floor. If your abs are not activated, if your lats at the back are not activated, you lift with your lower back and that's where the injuries happen. So engaging the right muscles is so important. Now, if you're in a wrong form and wrong posture because of sitting, and I, you go to the gym and you try lifting weights in this form, craning your neck, you land up with injuries. So it's, it's so important. Uh, form is so important for anything that you do in life. We come now to a very important muscle, our outer thigh. Again, that is constantly being worked when you're sitting. So how do I release that? I'm, going to show, I'm showing you everything in the seated position. So in the seated position, you can actually correct the imbalances that are being formed because of sitting. So you could cross your leg in a figure of four. Now, many people, if they are uh, inner thigh, hip flexor, outer thigh is tight, you may be higher up. It's okay. So cross your leg as much as you can. Again, I repeat. 
chin back, shoulders opened out, lengthen your torso, navel to spine, activate your abs, get your hands on that thigh. You're not applying pressure because I don't want you to shrug, shoulders down and just go into a forward lean without changing anything in your back. Maintain the distance between your chin and your chest. Now you could just go this much, but believe me, you're going to feel that opening out right from your upper part of the hip to the side, right up till your knee. So you can go down, keeping the activation in your abs, shoulders, back of your neck, and come back up. You can repeat this three or four times on each side while you're sitting, won't take more than 10 seconds, but you have relaxed that muscle. You are preventing the contraction of that muscle. You're preventing the shortening of that length of the muscle, which might create a shift in the positioning of your hip, which might create problems later on for movement. As we go lower, we have our hamstrings, which as I said, gets contracted because of sitting. So we again be in the same form. All I'm doing is opening out my knee, heel is on the floor, my toe is up towards me. Now maintaining this itself for many people may be tough because if their hamstring is so contracted and the shoulders are rounded just by opening out here and lengthening out your leg, you may feel your hamstring really getting stretched. So don't overdo it. Listen to your body, do to your body limit and capacity. Now, if this is comfortable, again, movement ahead from the hip. Don't move from your neck. Don't move from your shoulders. Don't round your back in an effort to go lower. Shoulders back, chin back, engage and activate. Maintain that distance between your chin and your chest as you go down and feel it all the way to your ankle. So go down there and come back up. Now this is dynamic movements that I'm doing for stretching. Do not do static holds without warming up your body because if you go there and stay there, if your joints are cold and your body is not warmed up, you may land up with muscle tears, which may cause greater problems. So only go to the limit that your body allows you and come back. So it's like a dynamic movement that you're doing and giving that stimulus, that stimulus is going back through your nerves to your brain, telling your brain, we need to open up this muscle. It's been contracted for a long time. So it's the brain muscle connect that we are changing. Do a few repetitions on each leg as we go along. We then come to our feet. Now, how are we sitting with our feet? Most of us have our heels lifted up or we are extending, we are in that slouch position and we are here and, or some of us have that restless leg syndrome. You know, you're stressed about something, you're talking to someone and you're constantly shaking that leg. Can you imagine what you're doing to your muscles, what you're doing to your joints, those tiny small joints? Or some of us sit with our toes together and knees out, so all of these create imbalances if they are done over many hours, days, months, and years. So I'm gonna tell you something, the power of 90, angle 90. I need you to have 90 at the hip, 90 at the knee, 90 at the ankle. You are in the most relaxed position for sitting. I'm not saying sitting is good for health, but in the sitting posture, angle of 90 is the golden rule. Full foot on the floor. Now, another thing that I would like to mention here is that when we sit, some of us may experience a little bit of swelling in our feet if you're sitting for prolonged periods of time, especially if you're traveling on the flight. I have a separate set of exercises to do on the flight when you're traveling for maybe 10, 12, 16 hours. 
what happens is that the backflow of blood and the lymphatic flow is affected because of sitting. Our calf muscles are our second heart. It's the pumping mechanism for our heart. It aids and helps our heart. So all we need to do is lift our heels up and down. Maybe for 15 seconds, maybe you could do 10 to 12 reps and that's it. It's pumping the blood back to your heart. And that takes care of that slight swelling that you may get when you're sitting for long hours. A very, very super tip that I'm going to give you. Standing is the best exercise to relieve all the problems caused by sitting. So every 20 minutes, stand for 15 seconds only. That's all. That's all that your body needs. So what you can do is place a glass of water four steps away from your workstation and get up every 20 to 25 minutes or maybe once in 30 minutes. Go there, have a sip of water. I'm not asking you to gulp down a lot of water. You don't need that. But two or three sips and come back. So just by opening out the hip, believe me, this is the center of your metabolism. Just by standing, by extending that hip, you're upping your metabolic rate because you stand, there is movement, you're breathing better, you're going there having a sip of water, metabolic rate goes up. Now, what happens when this is not happening? Now, if not enough oxygen is reaching your cells, you're hunched over, your heart starts beating faster because the oxygen supply is not enough for the requirement that your body needs. So you are taking short, shallow breaths when you're sitting. And that leads to other issues, hypertension, because you're straining the heart. Ideally, if your shoulders were opened out, you are breathing nicely, you're supplying good oxygen to all the cells of your body, your heart has to function less because instead of taking 25 breaths a minute, around 10 to 15 breaths or 12 breaths are enough for giving that same supply of oxygen to all your end organs and cells. So can you imagine how much you're stressing your heart just by sitting and slouching. So you can, as I said, get problems with your digestion, with your heart, with your breathing. Also, when you're taking short, shallow breaths, not proper oxygen reaching your brain, so you're more stressed out. Just by breathing right, you're more calm, you're more relaxed. So when you're sitting, whenever you remember, do the posture that I've spoken about so many times, lengthen, open, and concentrate on your breathing. It is the best stress reliever. Inhale, you can do that with me right now. Inhale for three counts. Try filling up your lungs and your abdomen with air and hold it there for three counts. Exhale for three counts. Hold it there for three counts. And repeat it. Inhale. And exhale. And you'll feel a sense of calm because the good feel-good hormone is released. And believe me, the good hormones play a very vital and important role in gut health, in metabolism, in weight loss. So it is so interrelated. So this was my topic, which I wanted to introduce to all of you. And uh, I believe that having a good posture is very effective for achieving our health goals and leading a pain-free, injury-free life. Thank you so much. Wow, Dr. Shalini, extremely valuable. And we are gonna take, we are gonna finish the call in three, four minutes. We have a lot of questions here and everyone is clapping on the live call here. Thanks wow. a lot. Very useful. I, I just want to ask one question that was asked, asked right in the beginning. Can you please add some tips for the issues raised for continuous working in front of a laptop 10 to 12 hours a day? Now you answered most of those tips, so that, that's already been answered. But she's asking then, 
We also keep our legs on some stools so that the legs should not be hanged continuously. However, I cannot see any positive results. So the question is, is it a good idea to put up your legs on a stool or to elevate your feet? Uh, again, you yes, yes. So what happens when you lift it up on a stool, you may go into a greater slouch and rounding of your torso. What I recommend is, you know, you get these small rectangular blocks at an angle of 30, you can place that down and place your sole on it. So it ensures that your heel is on the floor, your full sole of your foot is rested on that angle and automatically just by doing that, you have aligned yourself. Now, another one small thing that I would like to recommend is, okay, I'm gonna take a cushion, yeah? So most of our sofas and chairs, these fancy designs, they are so deep, you know? So in order to reach the backrest, we tend to slouch. So what I would recommend is that you sit, try getting your hip as far back to the backrest. And instead of slouching, mine is upright because that's the one I've bought, but most of them are tilted backward. I would want you all to take a cushion and push it down into the lower back. It should not touch your hip. Now, automatically, my anterior segment has opened out, my shoulders are back, and I'm so well aligned, you know? Also check the height of your chair. So if it is too low, that could lead to a lot of compensation. And if your chair and your table is high and your elbows are down, in order to reach that, you are slouching. Or if it is too high, then your feet are not touching the floor. So your heels are off the floor and your hamstrings are in greater contraction. So select, if you're going to be spending half your life sitting on that chair, you better get a chair made for you. It's a good investment, you know? So identify, go to the shop, sit on the chair, try out four or five chairs, and then select the one which is for you. Wow. One more question that's come up here. Shika is asking, uh, you know, what you already touched on, of sitting for a long time and how that can lead to indigestion. How does that actually work? How does it lead to indigestion? So when we are sitting for long, as I said, we are hunched over. So we are actually compressing our stomach and our intestines. Now, when we eat and there is a compression, there's one regurgitation of the acid back into the esophagus, our food pipe, and that causes acidity or acid reflux. Second, because it's in a state of compression, the juices do not mix well with the food. So the first segment of digestion, which happens in our stomach, instead of taking an X number of time, it takes X plus two number of times. So it stays longer and the process of it going down the alimentary canal is prolonged. Because we are, as I said, when we are sitting in the wrong posture, we are slouched over, we take short, shallow breaths. It's a stressful condition for the brain and for the body, right? So stress hormones, cortisol is released. Now, cortisol is a very, very powerful hormone. It overtakes all the other hormones. For example, we have our ghrelin and our leptin hormones, which aid in digestion. They are overruled. Now, increase in cortisol, increase in insulin resistance. Increase in insulin resistance causes a whole series of changes in your gut, it affects the working of the microbiota in your gut. It affects the absorptions. Wow, that was a really uh, specific explanation. So you mean to say that uh, being mindful of how we sit, especially after we eat, is kind of the key, that window of 30 minutes after food. That would also, be sorry, fun. one thing I would like to uh, add here, be mindful of your eating. Be aware of what you're eating. Don't be on the phone. Don't do other things because then you don't even know what's going into your mouth. Your satiety center is shut off and then you keep eating. So if you're mindful and aware and you're present and eating when you can see your food, you know, have a relationship with your food, 
your digestion will be better, your gut bacteria will be happy. And that's where Pramila, uh, as I've learned so much about her on gut health, will actually, you know, take the process to the next level. And you can actually see the change. Wow. Thank you so much, Dr. Shalini. Extremely valuable information. And we are really grateful for you taking our time to be with us on the Four for Life community tonight. And uh, we have pleasure. one more question here from, from Naga uh, Pujita. Um, she's asking, uh, thank Dr. Shalini for this wonderful, how to maintain our posture while sitting on the floor. I think that is the final question we take for the day, but it may apply to many people. So I want to take that question as well before we round right, off. There. Right. So I'm going to go on the floor. Now, what happens again when you're seated on the floor is you are here, right? So how do you correct that? I would advise everyone to take the support of the wall. So imagine there's a wall behind me. I extend my legs. Now, I try pressing my knees into the floor and my calf into the floor. Try getting my toes towards me and all the principles that I spoke about head back, try touching the back of your head to the wall, try touching your shoulders to the wall, see that you're not overarching your back. So give me that engagement in your abs and just stay there. Believe me, it's tough. Now, if this is easy for you, that means you're already in the right posture, I would then want you to lift that leg off the floor. And you see the effort that your body is making to maintain that form and lift the leg. So this will help achieve you being seated in the right form, taking the support of the wall, having a nice right angle and an L form to your body, pressing your heels to the floor, which will open out your hamstrings and calf, open out your mid back muscles because you're trying to touch your shoulders back to the wall. So it's actually a good corrective posture to be in to get into the right form. Wow. I, I, I have to take one question from Radhika Agarwal too. Sorry for keeping you on here. Not uh, at all, not at all. And because I think it's a question that even I want to, to, to get an answer to. She says that sitting erect feels tiring. Why does this happen? Uh, I've tried yeah. it several times and it's exhausting. <laughs> it feels easy to be in a slouching pose. Thank you, Radhika. I, I was scared of asking that question. <laughs> I, like, I don't want to be done. No, no, this, this is so true. Why? Because we've been sitting in the slouched form, as I said, our anterior segment has become so strong and tight and we have lost the strength of our back muscles. So the internal stabilizers of your spine and your mid back have been sleeping all this time. Now, if you say, okay, straighten up, knock, knock, get up, they are going to protest after a point because they have been sleeping cozily and you're trying to wake them up and tell them to work. They are not used to working. So this process will take time. So it's always about doing very small movements for small number of times and eventually adding on. Now, if you think, or I think that, you know, I've, I've got these tips and I'm gonna sit straight tomorrow for like those six, seven hours, it's impossible. So take baby steps, start with small goals. Say that for 30 seconds, I'm going to sit that way four times a day. Start with that. Then go up to say 40 seconds, 50 seconds, a minute. Believe me, that itself will be tiring, but be consistent, do it slowly. And eventually, because you have trained that muscle, because you've activated, because the message going from the brain, oh, we have these muscles, we need to use them. What happens is that, I mean, in a slouched position, you're not using half of your muscles. But the minute you become aware and you start using more muscles, they need more energy to work. You're utilizing more calories. Calorie burn increases, weight loss happens just by sitting right, you know? <laughs> wow, final question here, because I think many, many of, of us on this community, they have seen from the exercise pictures they put up are really doing well with the exercise now. And uh, Praveen here is asking, what about planks? If you do, we don't have time for you to teach us a proper plank, but people are doing planks and they say they do it proper. Does it help? 
to correct posture and to deal with this issue. Uh, doing a plank in the right form. Yeah. Is so important. I could, we could do a plank. Yeah, so can, can everybody because, be on the floor? Because Dr. Shani, I, I see, I know a lot of people are doing planks because it's just like an in thing to do. And absolutely, it, it, it is a disaster if you do it wrong. You can ruin your back and it's not easy to do a plank the right way. And yes. Just yes. show us once and then we'll end the call. <laughs> okay, okay, absolutely. So why, does, why don't everybody do it with me? So you'll actually know what I'm talking about. Yeah, so I need everyone to be in an all four tabletop position. So I need everyone to have your shoulder over your wrist, have your knee under your hip. Your head is ahead of your palms. Now, I do not want you to overarch your back like a cat all round, like a camel. I need you to, again, get your navel close to your spine, drop your shoulders away from your ears. Yes? Now, I want you to take your hands one step ahead. So now your wrist has gone ahead of your shoulder. From here, I want you to drop your elbow to the floor. I need your forearm parallel to each other. Don't interlock your hands. Now, from here, maintaining that engagement in your abs without shrugging your shoulders. So feel those shoulder blades away from your ears. Extend one leg. Lift one knee off the floor. Be there. Get the feeling of it. Get the feeling. Engage your abs, shoulders back and down. Don't drop your head down. Tuck that chin in as we did when we were sitting. Now extend the other leg. That is a plank. You should have 60% of your body weight on your spine. Do not shrug your shoulders here because the more you shrug, the more pressure you'll feel on your elbows. Drop those shoulders away from your ears, navel to spine. Squeeze those shoulder muscles at the back. Engage your glutes. That means just activate them slightly. And that is a plank. Wow. You know, those of you who want to see this again, uh, thanks a lot. We are going to put this up on YouTube. I uh, will send out the link later. You can see this whole recording and you can just fast forward to the last uh, few minutes of this talk if you're interested specifically in the plank. So thanks a lot, Dr. Shalini. We loved this session and we will take a little poll from the participants later on uh, potentially doing maybe an exercise session with you as well for basic home exercise. Uh, the right way because there's so many misconceptions about home exercise and people just do it the wrong way and it's not good so we will you land up with uh, more issues than uh, otherwise <laughs> after doing it <laughs> yeah so maybe we'll take your help for a specific session for the community later but Definitely. thanks a lot dr shalini thanks everyone for patiently being on this call with i've seen that almost everyone has stayed on for this whole um, call that went a little bit longer than we expected but it was all worth it and thanks a lot again dr shalini much much appreciated